In this video, I'm going to talk about um, joints a little bit, in particular talk about um, some other kinematics. So for the synovial joints, and those are joints that have a lot of movement, they're the joints that we mostly talk about. Um, you can describe um, the articular surfaces. An articular surface just refers to the parts of the joints that actually meet. Um, and this is the glenohumeral joint, your shoulder joint. And they can always be described in terms of convex or concave. So a concave part is kind of a, usually kind of a shallow indentation. And the convex part is kind of a rounded part. And so typically, the convex fits into the concave. And this is true just about every synovial joint that you can describe those articular surfaces as convex or concave. Um, and this is important because there's certain types of movements that occur at the articular surfaces, and those are based on the joint surfaces. So, for example, for the glenohumeral joint, when you have, um, when the humerus is moving superiorly, and this would be abduction, okay, there's, a, there's movements at the articular surfaces. There's actually a roll and a slide and a spin. For almost all the synovial joints, there's some kind of roll and some kind of slide. Sometimes there's a spin on top of that, and in some cases there's only a spin. But there's always some kind of movement that happens at the articular surfaces. And the majority of the movements are a roll and a slide. And how the roll and the slide occurs depends on which joint surface is moving. Okay? So in the case of abduction in the shoulder, where you just have the humerus moving up like this, you have the convex member, the rounded member, moving on the concave member. So it's convex on concave. Okay? Um, and so in that case, when you have convex on concave, the roll um, is going to go in the same direction as the humerus, which means it's going to go superior, but the slide happens the opposite. Okay? What happens when you have a convex member is that it, it, it tends to, it, it's a rolling point that kind of goes up too far, and it needs to have a corresponding slide to bring it down. Okay? That's true of all the joint, of any joint we're talking about. So you just have to remember the one rule about convex and concave because as long as you can, you can look at the joint surfaces, as long as you can point out which is convex and which is concave, then you can figure out what happens. Okay? So in the case of convex and concave, it's the, the roll is in one direction and the slide is the opposite direction. In the case of concave moving on convex, and this is the um, distal end of the femur, and the proximal end of the tibia, which is otherwise known as your knee joint. Okay, so this is basically me just kicking out my, what you would kick out your leg. Okay, this is concave, and you can see how that's kind of a rounded indentation, or kind of a, a shallow indentation. And here's your rounded, um, your rounded part, your convex part. So this is your convex part, this is your concave part. Okay, again, you don't have to know anything more than that, but look at the surface and see, is it kind of an indentation, or is it kind of a rounded part? So when I'm doing this motion, okay, when I'm moving the tibia on the femur, this is concave moving on convex. And when that happens, the roll and the slide are in the same direction. So just, you know, for whatever reason, when, when you have that concave member moving, you need to kind of get more surface area. And so you have to have that slide in the same direction. All right. And then if you had the femur moving on the knee, or moving on the tibia, that would be convex on concave, and that's a roll in the one direction and the slide in the opposite direction. So things to keep in mind, one is that in real life these movements are quite small. So even though in lab you'll take the bones out and you'll mess around with them, um, sometimes it's hard to see it, because they are really small movements that you kind of exaggerate in lab for people to appreciate the differences. The other is that uh, the roll, no matter what bone is moving, the roll is always the direction of movements. And I emphasize that because, again, sometimes when you're looking at it very closely, it's very easy to get confused. So always remember that the roll of the moving bone is always the direction of movement. So if the whole bone is moving superiorly, the roll is superior. If the, whole, if the entire bone is moving medially, then the roll is medially. That's always true. Okay, so the roll is always the direction of movement. The real question is, is which direction is the slide? Is the slide the same direction or the opposite direction? Again, if it's a concave member moving on a convex member, okay, the roll and the slide are the same direction. But if it's a convex member moving on a concave member, okay, see so if I just have the roll, I'm going to come off. I need that slide to keep it on, okay? If it's convex on concave, the roll and the slide are always in the opposite direction. 
And again, those rules are always true. You don't have to know anything else about a joint besides looking at the surfaces and determining is it concave or is it convex and which part of the bone is moving. Okay. In terms of bones moving, we talk about open chain movement and closed chain movement. So open chain movement is when the distal end is not fixed. So when I move my arm like this, that's an open chain movement. Or when I move my leg out like this, that's an open chain movement. A closed chain movement is when the distal end is fixed. Okay. So for example, when, when for this the particular example, when you think about the femur and the tibia, okay, Right now I've got um, the knee is flexed, and now the femur's moving on the tibia. For example, when you're standing up, right? Your lower extremity is fixed on the ground and you're moving on top of it. That's a closed chain movement. When you do a push-up, that's a closed chain movement. The distal end is fixed, and that means that different bones are moving on different bones. Um, when you push a door open, that's not really a closed chain movement. I know students get confused by that because the distal end is not really fixed, it's really moving. Okay, so think about the weight really securing it. So closed chain movements are very common in the lower extremity, right? Um, the upper extremity, not so much. The push-up is the main, or a push-up or a pull-up is the main example of that. And that's uh, movement of the bones.